left the Bahamas with this sense of myself. And from the time I got off the boat, America began to say to me, you're not who you think you are. I'm a black man in a white man. There was a habit in Hollywood of utilizing blacks in the most disrespectful ways. And I said, I cannot play that. Apple TV's new documentary, Sydney, examines the life and legacy of the first black Hollywood superstar, Sydney Poitier. The film does not shy away from the hard topics that define so much of Poitier's life, from his refusal to play the subservient roles that had trapped so many of his black peers, to his hard work to employ black people, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera, too. Joining me now is Reginald Hudlin, the director of the Sydney documentary, Mr. Hudlin, Reginald Hudlin, thank you very much for coming to the Sunday show. It's a joy to be here. Thank you, Jocko. Um, I'm not kidding when I said it was a terrific documentary, but it's bigger than terri terrific. It's phenomenal. Um, what inspired you to do this documentary on Sydney Poitier? Well, Sydney Poitier has been an integral part of my life for all my life. You know, our, our family grew up watching all his classic films, To Sir With Love, In the Heat of the Night, uh, and when I was given the opportunity, I said, hey, would you like to direct the first ever documentary on the life of Sidney Poitier? I think they got to the P in Poitier. I was like, yes, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, I want to play a another clip. This is Oprah Winfrey, who, who um, produced this documentary, talking about her experience with Sidney Poitier. Let's play that. Quincy Jones had a 42nd birthday party for me at his house. And... Sidney Poitier was there, and I remember going downstairs, turning a corner, and he was just standing there, and I froze, because here's my hero. He just said, how are you, my dear? At the time, I was getting a lot of flack from the black community for not being black enough, not doing enough black shows. And he sat me down in a corner at that party on my 42nd birthday, and he said, it's difficult when you're carrying other people's dreams. I wrote that quote down. I've got it right here in my notebook. I took notes while I was watching. It's difficult when you're carrying other people's dreams. This, the conversation that they had about people saying she wasn't black enough, those were things that he, was, he had to deal with in his, during his career. There's a loneliness when you climb the top of the mountain. And on one hand, we cheer our heroes as they're making the climb. But then when they get to the top, you're like, well, how'd you get there? We are suspicious of your abilities. And did you have to sell out to do that? It's like, no, you, you were cheering me all the way. And now that I'm at the top, now you're looking at me sideways. And that's an unfortunate uh, tendency that happens uh, with the way we treat our heroes sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, him being there in that moment to uh, talk to Oprah and give her that advice, he, he's an angel. You know, can we just talk about the whole, you know, not black enough thing and why th th that, that's a, a big part of, of your documentary on Sidney Poitier. It was also a big part of another documentary on Arthur Ashe. It seems like well, when there's the black first, they, they go through this cycle you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. well, it, yeah, we watch the heroes, we put them up. But then there's always this question of, well, who are you really? Right. Well, a couple of things. One is, uh, I forgot who said it, but there is a great line. Any definition of blackness that excludes Duke Ellington is invalid. <laughs> uh, and, and the second part is, you know, so much of the black community is so disconnected from power that we don't understand how power works. So the thing is, like, well, if you were able to get power, if you were able to get in that position, what trade-offs did you make to do that? And the fact is, success doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're selling out. Mm -hmm. Now, at the top of the mountain, there is a different perspective than being at the bottom of the mountain or even the middle of the mountain. So you may have a different perspective on things. And sometimes there's a presumption as, well, the most accurate view of the world is from the bottom of the hill. And it's like, well, why? Mm-hmm. Um, we're running out of time, but I cannot let you go without asking you, what did Sidney Poitier mean to you as a director uh, and everything he did throughout his career? What did he mean to you? 
course, an inspiration as a director, but more uh, an inspiration as a man. I mean, besides my father, he defined manhood, black manhood, his intelligence, his courage, his moral compass, his everything he was, the integrity, that's always what I have aspired toward.